dedicated service. Keith Brainerd, Council District 3, City of Georgetown, May the 7th through May the 2010. So we give this to Keith and to your family, and here is the nameplate that was across the front. Now, at this point, we ask that the outgoing person offer some comments about their experiences on the council. <laughs> Keith has written up a document, and he has asked permission for Katie to present this document to the loose assembly and to the uh, council. And so we're delighted to have you read that document for us and to add anything you might wish that you think is appropriate. And we would ask that you use the podium there, for we'd like to record that for all to see. Thank you. And forgive the informality. It should have been Mrs. Brainerd. I apologize. My name is Katie Bradford. I'm Keith Brainerd's wife, and these are our two oldest sons, Shelby Brainerd and Nicholas Brainerd. And now I'd like to share with you Keith's comments. Mayor Garver, mem members of the council, distinguished guests, I regret that I am unable to join you on this special day as I have a long-standing commitment to, to be out of state. It is with mixed emotions that I leave this council. I often have lamented the absence of contested city council races in Georgetown. A campaign provides a reality check, forcing candidates to compare their views with those of the voters. Contested political races are healthy for our democratic system and for our city. And I would like to thank Danny Meggs for relieving the concern I had about running unopposed. <laughs> it is said that when you give your time to a cause greater than yourself, it changes you more than you change it. This is true regarding my service on the City Council. Whatever changes to the city I may have affected or dwarfed by the change this experience has had on me. I am wiser and better for having served, and I would not trade this experience for anything. We live in a unique and special time in the history of Georgetown. Our city is filled with promise and hopes and dreams. The future of our city is bright, and we, all of us, are uniquely situated to play a role in shaping that future. Paul Brandenburg is a fine leader and manager, and I believe he has the skills, talent, and ability to lead this city to its next level. Georgetown City staff includes many tremendous professionals. I would not name any one of them lest I forget another, but their commitment to excellence is an inspiration to me and proof that our tax dollars are well spent. Working as a public employee is a noble calling, often with its own set of sacrifices and challenges, and we are fortunate to have had so many working here. Now there are a few issues in particular that I would like to touch on. On the so issue of social services spending, in the six years prior to my tenure, annual city spending on social services more than tripled, from around $100,000 to $400,000. We learned that the city of Georgetown spends far more on social services per capita than any other Texas city of comparable size. Out of respect for taxpayers and to promote the spirit of individual giving, I led an effort not to diminish this spending, but to freeze it until the size of our population catches up with the level of spending. One of Georgetown's distinguishing attributes is the city's deep and pervasive sense of community. The spirit of charitable giving, love of neighbor, and volunteerism are alive and on full display here. Ours is a community filled with generous people and organizations, a spirit that government cannot and should not try to displace. As Ronald Reagan said, nations crumble from within when the citizenry asks of government those things which the citizenry might better provide for itself. The source and sustenance of Georgetown's sense of community is its people, not its government. The critical and redeeming element of giving, whether it is of one's time or money or something else, is that such giving is a result of individual and voluntary sacrifice of one's own resources based on individual choices of how and to whom to give. Redistributing wealth does not promote a spirit of community. Ronald Reagan also said, no matter how big and powerful government gets and the many services it provides, can never take the place of volunteers. Freezing spending on social services is not politically correct, and frankly, it's not fun either. Who wouldn't want to approve ever-increasing funding for such causes as the Lone Star Circle of Care and the Boys and Girls Club? These are great organizations doing great work for residents of our city. But it's not our money we're spending, and I was not elected to make decisions that are politically correct or easy. 
Council's job is to make decisions in the best interest of the city and all of its residents, and that is the way I try to govern. Regarding fiscal issues, last year the council approved a balanced budget with no tax increase and no cuts in city services or employee pay. Prior to my arrival, it was apparently an unknown fact that from fiscal year 1998 to fiscal year 2008, city property taxes grew at triple, triple the rate of inflation. I was proud to have been part of a council majority that insisted on balancing the budget last year with no tax increase. Although the property tax offers many benefits to a taxing entity, it also is a blunt instrument inflicting itself regardless of a property owner's ability to pay. We should be sensitive to the burden of property taxes on working and unemployed residents, especially in difficult economic times. I am concerned that this city faces a serious challenge to its long-term fiscal viability. Georgetown has by far a larger portion of its property tax base frozen for the over age 65 exemption. A larger portion of its property tax frozen for the over age 65 exemption than any city in Texas. As the proportion of this frozen revenue source grows, the city will be forced to find alternative sources to fund essential city services. Attempting to address this challenge by simply shifting an ever-increasing tax burden to those whose property frozen are, taxes are not frozen will lead to fiscal and demographic decline by discouraging younger people from buying homes here, threatening the city with an inescapable fiscal and demographic spiral. In addition to social services spending and the achievement of the balanced budget with no tax increase, Another issue that arose during my tenure was pension benefits. In my day job, I promote the preservation of pension benefits for employees of state and local government. Above all else, a pension plan must be sustainable, and affordability is an essential part of sustainability. The Council's action to adjust pension benefits for city employees was prudent and appropriate because it promoted the sustainability of the city's pension plans. And now for a few final thoughts. Effective policymaking requires that council members challenge assumptions, ask hard and sometimes unpleasant questions, and demand unvarnished responses. Silent consent and routine affirmation are not healthy features of governing board behavior. Sound policymaking also demands that residents be informed of the issues they are voting on. Voters deserve to know what separates the candidates why candidates are running, and why they believe they should be elected. I am hopeful that future candidates for office in Georgetown will be asked hard and critical questions about such matters. When our nation was founded, Thomas Jefferson envisioned a government overseen by regular people, farmers, doctors, tradespeople, who left their jobs to do their part in making sure the government continued to function in a manner that reflects the will of the people, and that it is transparent and accountable. It has been my honor and privilege to play a small part in fulfilling Jefferson's grand vision of this great nation by serving on the Georgetown City Council. And now it is Danny Meg's turn to turn, turn to help oversee our city. I am certain that Danny will serve his district with distinction and integrity, and I am thrilled to have someone who has described himself as a Reagan Republican and conservative succeed me in this seat. And so, I am not saying goodbye today because I am not leaving. I will continue to live here, to be involved, and to pay attention to our government. Rather than goodbye, the better words are au revoir, which means until we meet again. God bless you and our city. Thank you. Before we move to the next item, which is the swearing in of Mr. Meggs for this for this position, uh, uh, 
council has advised me that we did not use 